Welcome back to the Mastering Runeterra podcast with Jay and Bay, the number one source for competitive legends of Runeterra news and information. If you're looking for the best decks to play right now, right now. be sure to check us out on Twitter at Master Runeterra or in our Discord. And if you want to take the next step in leveling up your game, check out our Runeterra team on Patreon where we do weekly learning calls and one-on-one coaching. Now strap in and grab yourself some Boro snacks because we are about to start Mastering Runeterra. Welcome back to the Master of Terror podcast with Jay and Bay. Uh, we got a great show for you guys today. Before we jump into everything, though, I just want to thank all of our subscribers. The number has been jumping like crazy since we uh, released our $1 first month trial. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of you guys now signed up on the website. And if you're not signed up, what are you doing? Get over there. We've got deck guides for all of the top decks. We have uh, tournaments every evening at 530 Pacific. For the rest of the week, we're going to have more of these again uh, next month and all the following months, basically for the, the two weeks leading up to the Opens. And we've got our weekly team calls and other awesome stuff for you guys. So go sign up after viewing as well, which everybody freaking loves. Uh, go sign up for $1 for the first month. Um, that's all I got for that. I'm bad at plugging apparently today. Uh, okay, let's jump into it. I'm excited to get into the actual meet of the podcast which is us talking about the meta game and lineups and everything because we got the first of ride open runeterra open coming this saturday literally like tomorrow by the time this comes out probably um and this is this is the first one this is like i'm surprised that people i want to talk to you a little bit about uh the thoughts on the meta because you know there's a lot of there's a lot of fire going on in the uh or whatever you want to call it disgruntledness um going on the community um we pumped our prize pool up from 1000 to 2000 by we i mean me sorry margin um and we've got maybe one of our lowest turnouts of all time i think with like 77 players uh and i think a lot of that is to do with you know the people kind of just not liking the meta so let's talk about that real quick and then we're going to specifics about um the meta game and lineups and what to expect and what we think you should be playing and stuff um so i know you're not a huge fan of this meta not that i am specifically or anything but um why don't you talk a little bit about you know your thoughts on the meta because i think they'll probably hearken what a lot of other people are, are feeling as well yeah so um the biggest thing that like these games really uh depend on i feel like is uh change things being different like from meta to meta uh if it's the same people tend to not really like that and it gets a little boring especially people who like compete right people who play a bunch of tournaments and stuff you don't want to just keep playing the same format over and over and over again you're looking for something new um and so when the new set came out and it didn't change anything except like one card um that felt pretty bad which, because it, which card are you speaking of uh, uh returno wrench that's the one of course. Uh, siren of course. song obviously siren song's a problem uh it's a really big problem it drizzle had a tweet today that like accurately mirrored exactly how i feel about it is that like um we shouldn't be harping on like design mistakes because usually things aren't a design mistake they're usually a balance mistake but cards like siren song or champion strength are absolutely like design mistakes um like riot should have played with it twice and gone this is miserable like this is this is not a fun play pattern um and it shouldn't have happened but it did happen and now like 25 percent of the meta is siren song so you either have to play a siren song deck which in my opinion is like a really really boring strategy some people will really like it and that's totally okay it's just not my kind of thing um or you have to play a deck that can like try to hold its own against siren song which really limits the meta so what it feels like is it feels like we have last meta but instead but we have a new broken card that like sucks to play with and against um and that feels that feels pretty miserable uh i was talking with puff alpana actually and we went over the list of cards and we were pointing out every card in the new set that is in a deck that has over a 50 percent win rate and it's like four cards and like three of them are just in one deck <laughs> 
like return yeah. wrenches in one deck, right? Like things like that. Yeah, totally. And so, so there's kind of two things that I want to like uh, pick up from there. One, I want to say that I haven't been totally hating this meta. I think part of it is because a lot of the decks that you can play right now that even aren't Siren Song, things like Aatrox or uh, Jaxorn or I don't know. There's like some new weird stuff. There is some like stuff popping up because like people have been forced to go into these like different like elusive burn, which we've seen before, but not in this like weird version or like Mono Jinx, Battle City, this kind of like stuff that uh, not that it's particularly good per se, but like there are technically new decks because they like are trying so hard to, to fight Siren Song. Uh, but those, those early ones I mentioned, like Aatrox and uh, Jack Sorn, I didn't really play them. In That's previous true. That's true. It's new matches. for you. Yeah. And so for me, I'm actually, I've actually been enjoying the meta because there's actually been a lot of new stuff for me to do. <clears throat> and then also something about the simplicity of the Siren Song decks, like they are, Somewhat formulaic, but like the Fizz deck has a lot of play to it. There's it even a lot of options. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, which is totally fair. Um, it's not like a like a healthy kind of deck, really. You know, it, like when has a Fizz deck ever been sort of healthy? It's like I'm going to do a thing you can't fucking touch. And um, <clears throat> uh, uh, but I I have been enjoying them for whatever reason. Something about the simplicity of some of these decks making it look a little bit easier on me uh on my mind i guess um and, and being able to kind of easily or pinpoint your mistakes like oh you did this or you should have done that i kind of enjoyed that um i don't know i just also just play, been playing a lot more and so maybe that's i mean winning which is always fun um it, and so anyways I'll, i'm gonna be happy when this meta is done or whatever but like for one month i don't know it's not my least favorite Per se, it's definitely not good though, and I and I understand all the different issues and stuff. Um, but, but the second point that I had when you're talking about design flaws, or what did you call it again? Not design flaws. You called it. I think I called it design mistakes or something like that. D yeah. Okay. Um, when so we've talked about this also in that none of the new champs are really seeing play, right? Like none of them no, have really. They're, they're all bad. Like, they, they've seen some play. You they've can play them. There's like. But like in every deck that a new champ is being played, like the only one that's like kind of maybe questionably above 50% is like Nidalee in a couple decks. But I think in all those decks, you could replace Nidalee with a better champion and the deck's better. Yeah, I was going to say Poro King, but really they're like Siren Song decks. That's like Poro King. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to me, that's probably the, the bigger kind of yeah, issue. That feels bad. And... And we were talking about like with like all oh, people should have known about Siren Song. Like I don't know, that's a tough one for me. That's like it's a little tough. To, like those 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 decks and lists are like kind of weird and out there. I can almost give them a pass for that. But when I looked at the champions, I was like, these suck. These suck. In yeah. two seconds, I was like, these are not good champions. The they only are one not going to make a splash. The only one I thought was going to be good is Nico, and I still think Nico has the best potential out of all of them. But then, like, Siren Song showed up, and you can't play Nico in a deck that can just, like, everything's bigger than you. Like, it does not matter that you have plus one, plus one, because all their shit's, like, so much bigger than yours. Um, but, yeah, you're totally yeah. right. The new champs are bad. And my bigger issue, no, that's not true. The second issue I have with it is that, like, this may just be a me thing, but even if these new champs were good, I don't want to play them. Yeah. They're not interesting. Like, and that's definitely, like, a, that's definitely a subjective thing right but like nidalee's boring i don't like everyone seems really excited about nidalee or whatever or they seem really excited about nidalee i don't get it she's just a quick attack she's not cool um you flip her up which like isn't <laughs> isn't really anything right you like maybe you can flip her on you you could cheat her out on turn three kind of like that's cool i guess um but not really not really that interesting um then again i'm like a well-known morph hater for magic uh, so I knew I wasn't going to like that. Poro King's like the most boring champion that we've had since beta champions. Um, and Nico's just like inspiring light on a stick, which is more interesting than inspiring light, I guess. But like. Yeah, these ones, these ones really mix, miss the mark in a lot of ways. Power level, interest. And like, I'm all for a Poro King coming in as a champion. That's cool. That just sounds awesome. But like, make them a little bit more interesting. 
Like, what does he do? He just makes a bunch of snacks. No, sometimes like, he makes a different Poro snack. You don't understand. He, yeah, he makes he makes <laughs> better snacks. Yeah. Like what? He doesn't have he doesn't have like overwhelm even. He's not like some just big fat Poro that's gonna roll over you. Like that's cool. Heart of Actually, the flesh like a more. He doesn't get overwhelm, does he? Right? No, he doesn't get yeah. anything. <laughs> um. So yeah, these are just they're unimaginative, frankly. Yeah. Nidalee, like, I, I think both Nidalee and Nico have, like, a cool idea. You're like, oh, yeah, you can disguise her as Nico as other things. And, like, Nidalee, you won't know what it's going to be, and then she's going to pop out of the bush and get you. But, like, that's not how the game plays. Like, it sounds cool in theory, but, like, that's not accurately reflected in your decision making, right? My opponent plays a face down thing, and I'm like, okay, it's either a 5-3 quick attack or it counters my spells. Like, I'm just going to play accordingly, right? It's, like, not yeah. really it, – it doesn't change anything. Um, and then Nico, you're just like, that two drop might be Nico, whatever. Like, okay. You know, it, it's not, it's not cool. It, even if it like, if do I just don't do enough, they don't do enough yet. If I described Nidalee to someone, I bet I could make it sound really sick. Right. Like, oh, but dude. And then like when she flips, she has overwhelm. So you can like, you know, you can, you can play her face down and then like you can flip her and you could like sneaky overwhelm. And then she gets a spear that lets you shoot something. And if they don't have something, you can deal four damage. And people would be like, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm on board with that. But then you I play forgot. and like, I forgot she even makes the spear. Yeah. It's, it's like not as cool <laughs> Lux. Um, and I feel like I'm giving, I'm giving the designers a lot of like shit here. Um, but I think yeah, they, des- they deserve some shit for this, frankly. Yeah. This set was like, I remember reading the set and people were like, what are you excited about the new set? And I literally said on stream, nothing. Same. I said, I'm not excited about a single card. Maybe Age of Dragons is what I said. And then I told people. Yeah, I, I wasn't was excited about that because I knew, I knew it wasn't going to be good enough. Yeah. So yeah, not a single card. So, and, and this is, you know, I can understand power level not being right especially this is the first one coming in after rotation maybe you want to keep things you know toned down right you're scaling it back because like you expect the format to be not as strong but they're not interesting at all like like age of dragon seems kind of interesting but it's so never gonna see play that what the fuck is the point like and i mean you can you can make an argument that like there's cards for casual people or whatever and that's cool that's great but but like I don't know, casual people are just gonna load up a ladder and get smashed by something and be like, "This sucks." Um, so even like, like a card like I was thinking of like Pokey Stick, easy two mana deals one damage, draw a card. Pokey Stick feels not a good big deal. To play feels it's good. So cool. Yeah, it's also uh-huh. cool. It's got flavor up the ass. Like I am fucking yeah. on this. It's a funny card. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't even get revealed in the. <laughs> the set reveal ends up being like one of the cooler cards. I was trying to think like what are some really cool champions? So like so some of the like iconic ones that do a lot of stuff are like Akshan and Zoe. Oh, yeah. Like Akshan, they do like Zoe, Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's bad. I was, say, I was gonna say Twisted Fate. He's so cool. Even like Tom Kench. Like that dude's sick. Tom Kench. Love Lee Tom Kench. Sin. Yeah, Lee Sin. Uh Samir and Seraphine. I know they've gotten a lot of hate. They came out on balance. Samir and Those Seraphine champs are, are super very cool. interesting. Yeah. They do cool stuff. Yeah. These ones are very they they feel vanilla, even though a bunch of stuff was put on them because they just don't is, really work. It's kind of irrelevant. The stuff is irrelevant. So they're just units. Yeah. It's like it's like Jin's champ spell or something. It's like, yeah, I don't know, it's there. Oh god, is it? <laughs> is it? I go so far out of my <laughs> way not to cast that card. <laughs> oh god, me too. Okay, anyways, um, and there was also, you know, there's also only like 45 cards or something in the set. Yeah, I you was surprised that? too. I only found that out when I like went and counted all the cards that were seeing play. Now, you could argue be like, there's all the new Poro snacks and there's like, you know, the chimp spells and stuff. But like, yeah. Yeah. if I can't put it in my deck, it doesn't really count. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is, you know, a little worrisome. Seems like the, this might be some budget issues. Budget seems to be a big issue this year. But it doesn't mean that you can't be doing a better job with 45 cards that you do have. So anyways, okay, enough harping about about that stuff. The balance patch will come also, and I think things will have a, a real interesting meta. I think the meta is actually really interesting at the moment. So let's let's jump into stuff. We got yeah, the open coming. I want to comment on that really quick and then we'll get to the meta. Okay. I think yeah, yeah. the balance patch will happen and this meta will still be boring. 
mm. because there's nothing new. It's gonna be the same decks. It's gonna, it's gonna be the same decks. It's gonna be the same decks. And then, like, yeah. how are you gonna make Nico good? Are you just gonna buff the stat she gives? Well, that's still boring. Like, yes, that's my only yeah. harp. I have found there, that the um, I'm much more excited for variety patches than I am for new sets because I feel like the yeah, variety so, patches they push new and interesting cards. Yeah, and so I think the big problem is because when they release these champions, they release all these like support cards with them. But then if your champion sucks, and then most of your support cards also just like don't go anywhere, they're just all irrelevant and they all kind of suck. Like the 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 best card out of the new set, uh, other than Siren Song, obviously, is probably the the Morphic counter stuff. That, that card's, that card's like yeah. kind of insane. It's insane. That if that was the champion, it'd probably be like kind of dope. Like, like let another fuck your shit effect. up. Yeah. It's, it's literally that good. And the effect is so good. And if you like, if you just added like a level up thing that it did like something else, like that's actually like a badass champion. Be like, this shit's too good. Get this out of here. Like, I don't even know. Ah. That's what I'd but, be like, saying, it would be like, fuck this, man. <laughs> right? It would be like interesting. That card's actually kind of good. But like, at least it's interesting, which is the mm. important part. Anyways, um, and you know what? One, one last just fucking dagger for Riot. Love you guys. Um, hire some rude para people. Magic does this. They have literally just cleaned out the Pro Tour year after year after year after year. People there at the top that are good, that understand game design, they hire them at Watsi. They all go work at Watsi. There's a reason that their draft formats set after set now are bangers. They're, most of them, a lot of them. Um, it's because the top drafters in the world now work at Watsi. So rather than hiring people for certain positions and then trying to teach them Runeterra, hire Runeterra players and then teach them about what the thing is that they actually need to be doing. Just a thought. Because I think I think a lot of things that are problems would not be problems. Because I'm telling you, if you showed me a lot of this stuff, I'd be like, nope, nope, nope. Also, no. I would have missed I would have missed Siren Song until I played it for the first I time. I probably would have too. And then I would have been like, this is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying I would have been the best game designer ever, but I can tell you if something's fun or interesting, or if it's going to be powerful enough. I can tell you on your personal list the things that you've missed or the things that are incorrect. I can tell you how to market the game and how to get people excited and things that will piss them off or make them happy. Anyways, okay. I, I have a segue. I have a segue. Um, okay, segue. Speaking of cards from the new set that are maybe being played and maybe doing some good, and also moving into the meta discussion. Um, Sump Monument is the new the new thing. Uh, Timo Sump Monument, uh, the puff cap deck, mm. where you just basically put some puff caps in your opponent's deck. Your plan is to Karina condense Karina, and you use Sump Monument to buy yourself time to get there. Um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a That's real new deck. And interesting. People, people are gonna be pissed off about that in short time because they're gonna hate it. If you get a lot of losing to it, you're gonna draw a lot of games. Can you imagine in like in the tournaments? Like, what happens if you just keep drawing? And, like, time's running out. I guess it comes down to the clock then. How do you draw, like insider knowledge? You both, you both puff, puff cap. Oh, that's a draw. I thought it would happen to active player first; they would die. So it does. It shows it to them, but yeah. then you still draw your card. So oh. someone said that. Okay. Someone in our team call was like, "Oh man, I got like five draws of that deck when I first started." I was like, "What? That's weird. I didn't have that happen." I loaded up the deck and literally got like two draws out of like five games or something. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that happens." Um, real quick, segue into that deck. What are you supposed to play the monument? Do you play it when you're a high life total, or do you want to take some damage and then play it? Because my thinking was that, and how I saw it first played was someone took a bunch of damage, went to like seven or something, and then plopped it down, and was like, oh, like now they have a. And, and at that point in the game, it was hard for them to push more damage. And I was like, oh, that that monument's like locked this thing down. But I've also played games where I took some damage and then I played it, and I was like, mm, maybe I should just play it earlier. When when like what's your thinking around it? I usually don't play math this out, but like you could probably math it out. Um, it's usually like sometimes I'll play it kind of early, but only if I'm like, am I going to draw a lot of cards? Because you know sometimes you look at your hand and you're like, nope, here are the pieces, right? I have my Karina, I have my Condense, I have my Puffcat Peddler, and I have some spells. Like I'm just gonna boop and not take eight because I'm only going to draw the like four cards. Right, the game's ending on turn seven or whatever. I'm only going to draw four cards. There's a pretty good chance that I'm not going to like um, draw that many puff gaps. But yeah, a lot of times I'll like take some damage and then play it. Um, I'll usually try to buy it 
I'll usually try to buy myself one draw, maybe two with it. Um, a lot of times, I think it's best used to just buy yourself the time to play your Karina. Because a lot of times with the Puff Cap deck, you're like, you forget how to like breathe. Sorry, I got something deck. stuck in my throat. Yeah. It's like um, pollen. A lot of times with the Karina deck, you're just like, man, I wish I had one action point before like my opponent open attacked me. Um, because then I could like go Karina condense Karina and probably like lethal them. And some monument gives you that action point because you're not going to take any damage on the attack. You're only going to take damage when <laughs> you're only going to take damage when you like start drawing cards. Uh, and yeah, people it, right now it's like new and it's spicy. Um, people are going to hate this deck <laughs> so fast. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of toxic. Um, I can't stop coughing. Put away from me. Oh, you know what beats this deck? Tell me. Avenging with style. <laughs> the new more flip up counter things because you can counter the Karina spell, uh, <laughs> which is which is pretty strong. It's pretty good. Also, obviously, blowing up some monument can just win you the game on the spot. I usually like before you attack or whatever because the deck actually is like okay. So. The deck usually isn't very prepared to deal with big open attacks, big wide boards. Uh, and so without some monument, they usually can't actually counter it. The deck is just built to buy themselves time to combo off, not actually control anything. I um I managed to win through my opponent going morph, counter, bounce the morph back to their hand, play it back out, counter, because I had double Korea, double condense. That's gross. It's messed up. I just got him. Yep. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, um Sorry, keep going. Uh, no, I don't. I don't actually like the deck at all, uh, which is funny because it's a combo deck. You think I'd be into it, but the deck just feels like a big Karina check. Like the deck can't win without Karina. Um, feels kind of bad. It's just like, do you have yeah, and okay. do you have the condense? just like Puff Cap decks, sometimes it just kind of falls apart. Sometimes you don't have the the landmarks. Sometimes you don't have Karina. Sometimes you don't have condense. But it is a real deck, and it will blow you out sometimes. Be prepared for it. I don't know how you're going to be prepared for it, but do that. Maybe pack an extra Build yeah. and Tailstones or something. Probably know if it needs to be banned from your lineup. That's probably the way you prepare for it. Yeah, if you brought Karma Set, maybe uh, get that one. The... Yeah, so we've been running these subscriber tournaments um, every weekday in the evenings, and it's helped me and I think a lot of our subscribers glean a lot of information. The The lists that we've got coming out of here are, are getting tighter and tighter and are, are innovating, and the meta is quite wide open right now. And for for lineups, like there's let's let's just go down the list. You've got like triple uh siren song, first off, right? That's an option. Lots of and then you've got double siren song plus X, which can be a whole bunch of things. And then you've got just fizz plus two other good decks. Then you've got the full counter like fizz or siren song. We're talking like things like the B lineup, which is kind of like a burn, go under them. You've got um, scouts and elites and all the, the CS decks. Then you've got the decks that are kind of trying to prey on those and ban Fizz. So people playing like Jin Nar, Malawi Swain, um, plus other things. Um, and there's other there's other lineups that are along that same line that have like Aatrox in them where they're you know, maybe a close to 50-50 with, like, Fizz, but they can still, like, beat up on a lot of these other decks that I mentioned. And so, and then, and then, and then you've got people, like, way out in left field. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but, like, then you've got your mixed bag of things, right? You've got the pop cap deck. You've got people that are still hanging on to Karma Set. Let it go. Let it go. You've got, uh, I played against Darkness the other day. People that are brewing and doing their own stuff. And so... And then, like, you know, there's a lot of variety in there, too, right? When, you, when you're when you doing, like, just Fizz or the two of the Siren Song decks, it's like, what's the third one? And that changes a lot of the dynamics, right? Because you're banning one Siren Song, or, and then, like, you know, you still have to play to wherever that third deck is, which is often totally different. And so because of that, we're not getting a lot of duplicate lineups. Like, you're not getting the, the standard, like, three best decks or two best decks plus whatever the third deck is, which is, like something that a lot of our metas we've seen and is like pretty like a staple almost 
you know, like you had to play that. TF. It's just two siren song, right? It's just Fizz, Evelyn. <clears throat> but that's not even the best. I don't think that's even the best thing you'd be doing. Um, there's also a wide variety of siren song decks now. We're seeing Demacia lists. We're seeing Ionia lists. The the first one that came out, the Targon list, is like kind of the worst one right now. It looks like mostly because it's being targeted. I think because people want to you know be good at that one. It's been it's been good since day one. People had to adapt a bit. Yeah, well, Fizz quickly took over and was like very yeah. good into it and just better in general, and so it dropped down. And, and the format the has worked one, around right? it. Like, as far mm-hmm. as we know, Diana probably. Diana has given the deck a bit of a boost now that it's playing Diana. We're seeing a lot of. Also, we're seeing evolution of the list. Like Fizz now has what's it called? The, the seven drop that gives overwhelm. Winding light. Uh, Winding light. Um, sometimes with both Zelani and Winding light. I've even seen people play the the three mana kill a landmark or search off a landmark. There's like I said, there's the Demacia lists now. There's Ionia lists even. What else is evolving? the the karma The karma decks are evolving, um, and so the meta the meta is churning like quite a bit. It's it's interesting to see. I do have a small bone to pick. Yeah, go with wording pick specifically. It. So sure, I get that you can you can play a decent amount of decks, right? But I wouldn't say that a meta that's entirely revolving around one card is an open meta. Like you have to like. Everything you do and think about has to take into account a deck. Fizz, Fizz Siren Song, right? Like, or a Siren Song list. Siren Song, period. Every single, every single decision is based off Siren Song, which doesn't, which isn't like my definition of open, right? Okay, counterpoint, counterpoint. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that not a thing when it's like Kaiza, Fizz, uh, Fizz Tia? Uh, like yeah. whatever is the dominant like all the worst deck is, we've ever had. <laughs> Zerelia, the dom- right? but there's like, almost there's almost always like a dominant deck or maybe two, but like there's often a tier zero or close to it, or this is the best thing you could be doing. Like it was um, S- Samira Seraphine last meta, right? And eternal, last yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. In eternal, and it's so, like there's there's almost always like a thing that's at the yeah. top. And occasionally, there's no thing at the top, and then like those metas are like. Kind of sucks sometimes. They kind of those are like, actual open metas, and those do suck. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So here's the, here's here's why I think it's open. You don't have to play Fizz. You don't have to play Siren Song. You okay. can a hundred percent. Lots of people will day two without a single Siren Song deck, and you can farm the fuck out of those decks like real hard. Like there's decks that beat them down real hard. But as far as a best deck goes. Fizz Siren Song is actually like one of the weaker ones, even though it is very powerful. It does still push lots of things out of the format, kind of, at least in best of one. In best of three, though, you could ban it and you can beat up on these other decks. This is Alawi Swain has a horrible matchup into, into Fizz Samira. Like, can't beat that deck to save its soul. Or, well, so does the stats say. But anyway, it's not, it's not a good matchup. But Alawi Swain is one of, the, one of, if not the best performing decks over the last two weeks of tournaments. You mean um, Fizz Reaver's Row? Fizz Siren Song? Yeah. Okay, you said Fizz Samira. Sorry. Fizz Siren Song is very good into the Lowy Swain. And a Lowy Swain was the best performing deck on Saturday at the Master Ventura Open. It, put, it only had 12 pilots and four of them made top cut. It was in, like insane. Whereas like Fizz Siren Song had 45 pilots, four of them made top cut. Mm. so there are some I, uh, as much as there's lots of things to pick at about this format there's some things that are like you know what I've seen worse I've seen a lot worse the fact that the best deck in the format is very targetable you can play you know two or three CS Demacia decks you can do a B uh, had the uh, like a burn lineup it's very good against um, the Fizz Siren Song decks you're just faster than them you just burn them, you just hit them fast, burn them, and went uh was went six zero, and then I think it seeded in the last round, and then made top four. Just farm and just farm and fizz all day. Actually farmed me. Um and I had I had some sick draws too with like, you know, Siren Song on three into my clerk with like another clerk and like that didn't matter. So you know, I think a lot of people are throwing their hands up in the air, which we do every single meta, myself included, and just being like 
after this, which is why I think we got Kaiser for so long. <laughs> yeah, they were tired of us. I was like, seriously, this time now it's a problem. That's Kaiser was it's a real like, issue. Kaiser was like, well, like remember, like problem. people, like people, like Poros deck. Oh, Poros deck, not the Poro King deck. Like, what's the remember the old one? Uh-huh. Yeah, and people like with the day one, you're like, oh, it's unbeatable. They're finna beat you. It's like I don't know. Two days later, it was gone. Um. Anyways, okay, I'm on a tangent. So th- this meta actually, because what happens then is a lot of people were on Fizz and just two other decks because that's pretty good. If you go yep. Fizz. And as soon as you start going other Siren Song decks, like you are in a lot of trouble to the the counter Siren Song. Fizz at least is powerful enough. Like you can you can get in there with a forty or forty five percent win rate, you know, and, and try to fight through some stuff. But the other Siren Song decks, like that, starts dropping off real fast. They're not nearly as powerful or nearly as good. The Masia, the Masia one actually is looking pretty good, but the Argon one is very susceptible it's like it's a 55 percent win rate deck kind of thing like it's not very good in the current meta it's like okay um so it, so you're left with like one fizz plus two other decks okay so what are your two other decks they're probably you know they could be things like scouts they could be uh the jacks orn you know decks like this well guess what now people are coming to ban your fizz and they're going to bring, like, a Lowey Swain or, like, these mid-range crushers. And they're going to come beat up on your scout stack and, uh, and your Jack Zorn. They'll bring, like, Aatrox. And, and so now the, and now the format starts to, starts to turn a little bit. And now you can go, like, one underneath and try to go, like, triple. This is where, like, triple Siren Song actually now can beat these decks that are trying to ban the one Fizz. And then also can sometimes beat uh, the one the one fizz to other decks. They go like kind of 50-50 with them. Maybe you bounce scouts. You got some like fizz matchups. You try to get the other one. And so this is why I think the meta is maybe it's not open. Open's probably not the right word. Because I literally named like three different kind of things you do. Would you but, say there's more options than you would immediately think, maybe? A lot more options, a lot more options. And I brought this up in the team call yesterday. When you look at the at the meta tier list, I, w- I went through the top like 11 decks, the 11 most played decks. They were all smack dab around 50% other than like Fizz, which is like kind of wild. And in my experience of playing all these different, I played like a, the vast majority of decks from the meta. The, de- the games felt like they had enough play to them that I could outplay my opponents. A lot of the time there's still there's still you know lots of stuff that happens like you can't do anything but it felt like it felt like what we say agency it felt like the things i was doing actually mattered and, th- and that feels really good and maybe it's because i was just doing too many uh, too much of the busted stuff maybe i was just like haha siren song haha csu haha <laughs> what horn, i do matters, on your face what you do doesn't <laughs> i have all the agency yes. agency is a zero-sum game that's that's honestly probably a big part of it i've been playing decks that do a lot of winning um so let's see let's let's jump into like the real let's give some people some real advice i as of a few days ago was on a fizz something like scouts and Jack's Orn type lineup. Um, I, I was thinking about swapping scouts out for elites, which sounds insane. But when you look at the stats, it looks like it's kind of the same deck, but just it's better into scouts. It's like and the Bard Garen deck. Bard Garen, yeah, elites. You just the stat check deck. It look it, in the stats. It looks like just better scouts, pretty mm-hmm. much. Today, though, I would say I'm currently probably on triple Siren Song okay. because. There's now like some other versions that come out. The Demacia version looks pretty hot and might even be the best version, potentially. Because you get to play Siren Song, Reaver's Row, Strength. and Champion Strength all in the same deck. Wait, how do you Doesn't do that? Doesn't suck. Uh, That's... what do you mean? Oh, it's Bilgewater Demacia. Yes. Okay. I don't know why I struggled with that. Siren Song I, looks like a Shadow Isles card because it's kind of purpley. <laughs> Dude, I it never know what card. I never know what cards are in any regions ever. Never. I don't. Yeah. I barely know their names. Hire me. Hire me, Riot. Anyways, 
Okay, so yeah, I think that's what I'd be on. I think I'm on one of those for sure, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. And my camera, and my camera just froze. Your camera did freeze. It's really nice frozen still image too. Yeah, it's great. Okay, you're back. Um, oh, we're back. Okay, before we dive into into the other decks. Are you? Do you have a lineup picked out? Have you? I'm lost. Yeah, I'm. I'm lost. I. I. The, the main problem is I don't like anything, um, and that makes it really tough. Long time viewers of this podcast. No, the, none of the spell decks are particularly good right now. No, no, everything I like is bad. And long time viewers of this podcast or my channel or anything will know that like, I only perform well with things I enjoy. Um, every now and then there's an exception, but I really because like I. have I'm not willing to put in the time or the effort to things I'm I don't like. Okay, you you like you like challenges, right? You like competition. I do like challenges and competitions. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna throw it on the I'm gonna throw it on the gauntlet for you then. I I challenge you to for the for the mere three days we have before the open, literally the smallest amount of time humanly possible, to see how okay. much pain you can tolerate to push through and play decks that you don't like. And learn and grow as a player for a mere three days to try and go and crush this open. That's so very important to qualifying for Worlds. And that will make you feel a whole bunch better later on, like going into the second and third open this month, if you do well in this first one. For three days to just see how much pain you could take. Same as running a marathon, doing a triathlon, a Tour de France. <laughs> Sam is trying to win a two-day tournament in Vegas with no food yeah. and just crappy kind of crappy pizza that, was that closed at 6 okay. p.m. Yeah, that part sucked. I still have PTSD for that tournament. I, I can't believe that that was... It was, the, it was kind of fun, though. <laughs> it was a good time. Anyways, three days. Three days, suck it up, and become a better player. See if you can do it. Can you do it? Probably not. Three days? Oh, it's so weak. I just don't want so to. Sad. I just don't want to. But, okay, do you want to qualify for Worlds? Yeah. Yeah. Would it? Would you want to qualify for Worlds more if they said there was, like, a $200,000 prize pool? Yeah. Me but too. Like not a lot more. It matters to me, but it's not, like, the biggest deal ever. But, yeah, that would matter. But, but there, there's a massive difference between it's not like I expect to go win worlds or anything, but there's a massive difference in my brain to be like, hey, here's two hundred thousand dollar prize pool, forty thousand up top for me to be like, I want to start moving in the direction of that forty thousand dollars. I want to move that way when there's like, hey, here's no information. We have no idea. I'm like, I mean, I don't know if you're just handing out worlds qualifications, like I'll take one. But like, I'm about to go break my freaking back. Is like one of the hardest qualifications possible. Well, it's I think it's a fair qualification, but it's very hard. It's very difficult. And when there's not like a carrot up there, it's, it's rough. Has. Yep. Um, a bit about my how I like to compete or why I like to compete. I love competing, right? We we both are like this. Competing is like my thing. Uh, but I only compete when it's like when I enjoy what I'm doing. Um like for example, for flesh and blood and stuff, when we have pro tours and nationals, they're now adding draft, right? It has it's draft and constructed. Um, and I don't like draft. <laughs> so I will qualify for day two and drop like a hundred percent of the time to go play the Grand Prix that's only constructed because <laughs> I don't want to have to draft again. I'd rather just play the all constructed tournament. So I'll still be live. I'll be like X2, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> You gotta get over that somehow. You gotta you gotta learn to find the fun in these things. I'll come I'll come draft with you. I'll teach you the fun of it. When like there's nothing there's nothing more fun than just getting someone with like the dumbest like just imagine like the dumbest cards you could possibly imagine. And you're like I don't how about this like seven mana elusive like the Imperion you know, like, Dragon thing from Elor or whatever. And they're just like what the fuck? You're just that. like. Off the, you're like, okay, we have got, we got one out. Here it is. Ah, go, get him! Like it's, it's uh, magic better. draft is much better than flesh and blood draft. Fair, that's fair. Yeah, my draft pretty good. Oh, speaking There's of which, been, I qualified. Never been anything. I qualified as as for the um the pro tour qualifier thingy on arena. That's like limited. Oh, next. That's also 
this Saturday. Oh, that I have to do back to back. Yeah, I'm do, I'm doing both. I also have I have plans to go to the beach for like this big thing, uh, and so I literally have to. I'm gonna wake up like seven a.m. Like, oh, one tournament. <laughs> oh, next Cat tournament. Song oh, really to the beach. Run, 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 run. So I'm trying not to stress myself out about it. But um, yeah. That's anyways, a, okay. Back weekend. to it is. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um. Okay. So so you let's want get, let's play, get back into the decks. You want me to play the good decks? What 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 is it? What what do I play? For you, you? Have a nine out of ten player, maybe eight out of ten. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, and a tournament that's coming up, and you give them three decks. What do you give them? I mean, if you're not going to enjoy any of the decks that I give you anyway, I would just give you triple science on. Really? You think it's that? You think to make, it's the best to lineup? make to make day two? Yeah. Yeah. What would you give me specifically? Because I heard you start to talk about that. I, I think same. I think still triple science on. I think I, my advice to you to go, would be to because you know thinking of the options, it's either it's either triple science song or it's the de- or it's the the lineup that wants to ban Fizz and play like things like Aatrox, Jinnar, Lowey Swain that stuff and then just beat up on the other decks of a similar nature maybe jack's horn mm-hmm. that also like that also would work ring fizz siren song in that lineup right i feel like i feel like you want to go one or the other i think mm-hmm. putting your foot half in exposes you to the lineups that are targeting fizz and then also exposes you to the lineups that are banning fizz i think you're you're stuck in the middle because there's people going to both extremes and you're getting you're getting squeezed in the middle i feel like it's it's fine like I, I was playing that lineup and it was fine, but I was basically trying to bully other Fizz decks, more or less. I was on like Fizz, Scouts, Jack's Horn. Mm-hmm. And it worked. And if they if they brought like a second Siren Song deck, I like bully them pretty hard. That's why I like it. And I still it's just like the best Siren Song beating deck, right? <laughs> yeah. And so it's fine. That lineup's fine. That, that might be the best making day two lineup, actually. Yeah. It definitely could be. I mean, that's been the strategy forever. Like, I feel like we have something close to that conversation every single season. Where it's like, oh, well, I'll bring the best. I say, well, I'm going to bring the best deck. And you go, well, you shouldn't bring the best deck because, like, people are going to target the best deck. Or they're going to ban it. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> I'm and, going and to so, and I dare you to beat I, it. I think I, I think I just did this, like, last season, too, where I was like, you know what? I'm going against the wind. I need to remember why we do this. And then, sure enough, I, like, ran into, like, just, you know, Deck that can't be played, deck that doesn't exist, some brew, uh, someone banned wrong, mistakes being made I couldn't take advantage of, just thing after thing after thing where I was like, oh, why don't I just bring the best decks? And why am I not just playing the decks to kill people? Oh, yeah. people. Yeah. That's a good point. I'm actually like, like the first check is like, does your deck do the thing? Then don't bring the deck if it doesn't do the thing. Yeah, that's, that's something that you always talk about, even when we play other games, is being able to punish people. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, like Fizz Samira, like if you bring some cute thing, it will you're dead. punish you. You're gonna lose. Punish you hard. And when you're when you're playing something like Puff Caps, your opponent could be like, "I brought Aesol. Is Aesol still around? No. Uh, not really. No. But let's pretend it is. Someone is it, will bring it. Is it in the for, Is it in the format? People will like, bring it. Yeah, 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 yeah. People will bring. I, can, I, can, I actually go, I don't purposely. remember. It Anyways, is. okay, so people will bring stuff like that, and you'll, or whatever, I'm just throwing something out there, some brew or whatever, and you'll be playing Puff Gaps, and like, I don't know, it just like, it won't, won't work out. You and you'll lose the game. Yeah, you just can't punish them for sitting there doing nothing for 10 turns. So, yeah, doing the powerful thing, very good. Let's touch on, I hear a lot of people, I saw Boulevard put out a which karma deck is right for you video, I didn't click on it, because the answer is the none, none of them. Of them. <laughs> So. I, I have to watch that video. I, it's so funny that people come in. So like uh, yesterday I was streaming a bit of Runeterra or two days ago or something. Um, and the title of the stream was like finding out open lineup, you know, whatever generic title. Um, and people are like, oh, so you're going to bring because I was like, I'll probably bring Fizz Siren Song and Jinnar because like Jinnar had just been discovered and it was like doing really, really well. Um, and then I don't know what else. And they're like, oh, yes, yeah, so you're going to bring Fizz Siren Song, Jinnar and a Karma deck. And I was like, no. And everyone went, what? And then five minutes later, someone else would come in and they're like, oh, so you're going to bring this, this, and a karma deck. And I'd go, no. And they're like, you're the karma guy, bro. You got the, I'm the karma. karma guy. Yeah. And I just, I think it's just really bad right now. I think um, 
currently i know it has like a 50 something percent win rate it just i don't care it's it's it doesn't feel good um last season even when it had like a 49 percent win rate that deck felt good uh and there's there's a difference that usually means something to me right like when i when i play a deck and it's got like a couple seasons ago i was super high on jack seraphine bb bb combo when i would play the deck i was like this deck this deck has it this deck does the thing it might be really hard, but like I could feel it when I played it, right? Like this deck is powerful. This deck brings a lot to the table, even though its win rate's really small. And I played it to great success, both me and Ikado did. Um, and then Karma Set was kind of the same way, but now I play Karma Set and I'm hoping my hand lines up with what they're doing. And if it doesn't, I lose the game. And that's not the feeling you want to have. Right, you don't want to draw your hand and be like, "Well, I hope they have this kind of a game instead of this kind of a game because otherwise I'm fucked." Right? Like that's not that's not what you want to have happening. Yeah, maybe you still win over 50% of your games, but like where's my edge coming from? It's my opponent's messing up, right? Like and I'm I don't like to depend on that. I like to win the game. I like my deck to win the game for me, and then I need to step in sometimes and like skill gap people, right? That's that's what you want. You don't yeah. want to have to skill gap every game or like flip yeah. coins. Exactly. That's that's it exactly. And for anyone out there that's playing Karma, this is the thing. You're gonna beat lots of people. They're gonna make lots of mistakes. As as the rounds get later, though, people are gonna be making a lot less mistakes. And if your cards don't line up, you kind of just you, you die. You lose. You just don't have the right answers at the right time. You lose. And again, we had this conversation. You can play Karma. You can win by Cam and Freeze again. Again, yeah. But. It's it's going to be a bad time. It's going to be a rough. You are fighting an uphill battle unnecessarily. That's all. That's, That's all it is. But you could you could do it. Like you could bring a knife to a gunfight, and like you might get a guy right. Like everyone's like like you could trying people. to duck for bullets. You just like crawl over there and shank him in the ankle or whatever. Like you could get someone. It could happen. You hide behind something, pop out at them. But you know, like if you brought a gun, probably just an easier fight for you. That's all we're saying. Um. um. I talked a bit about this. We've talked a bit about this on the podcast and a lot during uh, team calls, actually, especially recently, is that I like to look at the deck's highest performing pilots and see how they're doing. Yeah. And that's a big metric for me on whether or not a deck is worth playing, uh, because I like to see are the best performing people getting very consistent, very good results, or are they just doing slightly above? Like, is it just like one you know deviation above like the average win rate or whatever? Uh, and Karma Set used to be where the best pilots were achieving very high win rates, and now it's not. Now, the best pilots are achieving better win rates, but not super high win rates, which tells me that there's not, like, there's not a lot to exploit there. Right? Like, if I put Floppy Mudkip on Karma Set P and Z, and he caps out at 62%, I'm hamstringing him. Right? Like, why not put him at something else that allows him to hit like 70 something because, you know, he's probably the best player in the America server. Why, why would he restrict himself to something that doesn't let him go above a certain ceiling? Right. And karma set. Yeah. Feels or like anyone else enough. or anyone else. Yeah. It's just like, why, why would you, why would you do this to yourself? Right. You can only win so much with karma set is what it feels like because a lot of the games that you lose are just out of your hands. Um, yeah. You're, we, you're, things don't line up and you just lose. Yeah, exactly. And we should asterisk also that you you should still like if you if you put in a whole bunch of reps to Karma Set and you've put no reps in with just play Karma Set. Any, whatever <laughs> whatever other deck, just play Karma Set. Don't don't uh don't pick up some deck that you don't know how to play. It's number one, pick from the pool of decks that you know how to play at a high level. That that's that's it. And then we're assuming that you could pick anything and play anything at a high level. There is all an asterisk there. Yeah. Yeah. All things being equal. Because I made that mistake. People would be like, this is the best deck. I'll just pick it up the day before and then have no idea what I'm doing and just make a bunch of mistakes. So, like, my win percentage is not 70. It's like 55 because I'm just hunting all over the place. So, take that into account. What, what was one of the other decks that I thought was a trap? I, I think Jinnar is a, you think Jin a Nars bit of a trap. trap. Yeah. It, it's, I'm not saying the deck's bad. I think it's it's got similar issues to like pop caps, yeah, and it's, and it's not maybe one of the and best karma. Issues. It's like tier yeah, 1. it needs things it needs things to line up. And trust me, it's fun. You get to do cool it stuff. It is fun. That's why I like it. It's a good time. Yeah, and I think there was like a, another one I wanted to throw in there. 
but yeah, basically, I think what you should you should be playing is Siren Song decks, uh, CS decks. What's it called again? Champion Strength. Champion Strength. I've been calling CS for so long, I forget. Champion Strength decks, Siren Song decks, Jax Orn. Maybe like a burn strategy if you want to go like B. So like Samira, not Samira, Samira, Fizz, Fizz Samira, yeah. mm-hmm. stuff like that. There's some other mid range decks. Olawi Swain is still kicking. People that are good at playing Olawi Swain, the deck does work. Aatrox has been putting up numbers, saw it do a lot of work. But that's one that I'm less, I don't, I'm not as familiar with. I've just seen it kick a lot of ass and and do really well in the hands of players that know how to play it. It's very good. I struggle with it a bit because, like, I think Siren Song Evelyn is, like, supremely popular <laughs> by, like, non-competitive players right like your average joe loves evelyn decks um i feel like maybe this is just me talking out my ass but i feel like that's the case and have you ever played that deck into like a 6-6 tough evelyn <laughs> it fucking sucks man like <laughs> it's so miserable Do they just go like siren song evelyn you're like ooh, <laughs> yeah it's a bad time yep I never thought about that. I think that's about it, actually. I don't think there's like I don't know. You can maybe make a case for some Echo Jinx or something um, that's like way fringe. Don't but play those, I think those are the those are the, those are basically the decks I think are like good right now. I'm sure I'm missing like one or two right now. We kind of harked on the ones that are not good, but make your make your lineup out of those decks, and I think you're just going to have a good time. Just going to beat up on people. Do the do the unfair things. Do them lots. So. It's more or less what I got. Yeah. Want to watch the opens? I'll be streaming it. You probably won't be streaming it because you'll be trying to jam through it, maybe. Yeah, I'm probably just going to be trying to jam through it. Um, I have been streaming our subscriber tournaments every evening, though, at 5.30 oh, yeah? Pacific. Yeah, awesome. uh, just not Tuesdays. But, but I, I play in them typically, and then we after I get knocked out in the first round, we go and watch uh, other people win our money, which is awesome. Which also, I have to play two people for $50 each, which we updated this week so that there's no longer. Now there's a tiebreaker. So there will be one winner that will play Majin for a $100 money match. Come win our money. This is your best um, shot because I might be prepared next season, but I'm certainly not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I might be the harder money this, this season. Jesus. Uh, I think you probably are. Like, not close. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this open. I still need to do like, I do this thing a lot where like I've prepared so much more this season than I have in past seasons because past seasons I typically just grab three jacks and like up. jump yeah. in and like do almost zero. And so compared to that, I've done infinite. I feel like, oh, I'm so ready. But like really, there's still that last like whatever 10, 15 percent of work or whatever that needs to be done for me to have that like red pup game, freaking lockdown kind of thing. Maybe get a second, you know, a day two lineup even waiting in the wings. Uh, and so there's still a lot to be done. Um, and so I'm trying not to take my foot off the gas just yet. Um, yeah, I think that's you got anything else. Anything else? Uh, nope. Next time we'll over? come back and we'll talk we'll about, about how I went 03 and you took third or something. That'll be cool. No, come on. You got to You got to get those points, man. Get it's it. True. Get it together. This Sure. Just play three of the decks I just mentioned. You'll be fine. Yeah. Pick three of those. Go kick some butt. I do. No I definitely what, don't want to lose my like 100% day two record. That Is it? Uh, I mean, the ones you've played in. All four opens I have top cut. Oh, I see. Just for the opens. Yeah, opens. I have not top cut every season. Well, that would be fucking insane. <laughs> okay. You did but for a while. I, I did like for a long close. time. Yeah. All of them that yeah. I... All of them that I did played it? in, except for like one or two. Was it like there was like the one in France or something? The one in France, that's right. I missed the one in France. Yeah, but from the last round. Yep. So I missed All that the ones one. that you didn't didn't play after playing in another pro tour. Yeah. That picture like of me AM. playing on the floor of TwitchCon in day two is like so <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> Dude, that's isn't that the saying? Like play the game, see the world? Play the game, see the world. Yep. I was running around the convention center trying to find enough Wi-Fi to finish my games. 
<laughs> Dude, that's wild. It was like that's literally running wild. around TwitchCon. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah. I, can, I, I can imagine. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap it up. We'll see you guys uh, next week. We'll go over some of these results. We'll see how my predictions came true. By the way, sorry, you know, okay, just real, real quick. You can still win with anything. Yes. I'm just trying to tell you what I think is best, and it's probably only best by, like, whatever, however many percentage points. You can still win with all the decks that we mentioned that are not optimal or good or whatever. You can still win, especially if you're, like, the best person on the planet playing that deck. Play that freaking deck. Or if you don't know how to play other decks really well, but you know how to play this deck really well, play that deck. That's that's totally fine. Lots of people still day two, all kinds of nonsense. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.